So what does RMR provides? RMR or RMR2 to be specific. What does it provide? It enables uh, you to write MapReduce jobs in R uh, and then obviously get it executed on the Hadoop. Okay. Uh, so what do we mean by write MapReduce jobs in R? It essentially means uh, you are still in the MapReduce framework. So you, while coding, you are still in the frame of writing mappers, reducers, and uh, all that. However, instead of writing in Java, you would be able to write in R. That's the only difference. So we, we have seen how to create functions in R, right? Uh, like we, for classification, for example, we created a function that checks, um, uh, that computes uh, different uh, classifier performance measures, right? So in a similar manner, you would create another function called an my map, and then uh, it takes a key value pair, okay, and uh, it outputs a bunch of other key value pairs. Right, because that's what uh, we said is a mapper. Right, mapper takes a key value pair and then produces a list of key value pairs. And in a similar manner, I'm going to write uh, our function called my map, which uh, exactly takes a key value pair and then produces a list of key value pairs. Okay, and that's all I need to make sure that function does. And as long as it uh, has such an input and output characteristics, I can simply use it, uh, use that function in the place of a map. Okay. And similarly, what does reduce do? Given for a key, given a list of uh, values, right? You do some uh, aggregations inside the reduce and then produce another list of key value pairs, right? And the same thing you can do uh, in R as well. So you write a function called myReduce, which has exactly the same semantics. And then you can call, uh, uh, call that function from the reduce phase. OK? So by doing this, essentially, you are able to run your programs on large data. OK? Without uh, these capabilities, what you had to do probably is uh, either don't deal with that data at all because it's large, or you can simply sample a small subset so that it fits in your memory and then uh, work with it. Okay, but that's if you don't have RMR two. Okay, and uh, RMR two enables you to uh, execute one function called as MapReduce. Okay, this is an R function. So you call MapReduce uh, uh, function. It internally spawns a MapReduce job to get your work done. Okay, so what, so that means this is a primary, uh, the single workhorse for you for doing anything. Okay, so whenever you want to run a MapReduce job, you would call MapReduce function in RMR2. Okay? And what does this function take? Not surprisingly, I mean, if you think about it, you can list those things as well. What should a MapReduce job have at the minimum? It needs to have an input data set, right? Because you need to operate on some data. And then you will produce some other data as part of uh, your MapReduce job. So you need a output path as well, where the data should go, uh, whatever is the generated data. And then obviously at the minimum, you should have what is your map function, what is your reduce function. Okay, and there are a bunch of other options as well, we'll see. Uh, but at the minimum, these are the main stuff, right? And uh, yeah, the latest versions also have uh, uh, support for uh, Microsoft uh, Hadoop distributions as well uh, for Windows, uh, but uh, that's okay for now. Uh, these are the primary functionalities that are available in uh, uh, RMR. Okay, 
Uh, first one is a convenience uh, package, uh, which is a, a convenience feature, which is the ability to write key value pairs, okay, or ability to create key value pairs. So here, for example, uh, we said this external process is the one that uh, consumes a key value and produces a key value, right? So in order to do that, obviously I need to have a mechanism to create key value pairs. And uh, there is a function uh, in RMR or RMR2 uh, called keyval. You just pass in two arguments to it and then it will create a key value out of uh, those two arguments and then you can uh, use it in the regular MarkRegist pipeline. 